Good evening, Saturday night, and we're coming to you again from our Mokta Baptist Church. We're doing an Advent series. Um, it's being led by the uh, writings of Anna Robbins from Acadia Divinity College called Unexpected Jesus. So tonight we're going to be looking in the Old Testament in Hosea uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 11 as we're working through how is it that Jesus has come into this world and in what state uh, were we at or are we at as we expect him. Why don't we begin this evening with prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Father God, as the beauty of your world surrounds us and the true nature of each season shows its beauty, we pray, Lord, that you would remind us that even in the dark and even in the cold, you are at work and you are doing a great work. Every tree out there that is without leaves is still alive. You are doing a mighty work underneath the surface. So, Lord, we pray tonight as we prepare for Advent, though we might find ourselves cold and stripped and bare, Lord, remind us that you are working on the inside and that you are providing life even when we don't see it happening around us. Lord, thank you that you work from the inside out. And we pray you'll do that tonight for us as well as we read your word and as we reflect on the coming Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, like I said, our reading tonight is from Hosea chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. And I'm going to read it for you here as well. And please have mercy on me. Some of these uh, names are a little tricky. So, the word of the Lord came to Hosea, son of Beri, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. And in that day I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her lo Ruhamah, which means not loved. For I will no longer show love to Israel, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but I, the Lord their God, will save them. After she had weaned lo Ruhahem, Gomer had another son. The Lord said, Call him Lo-Ami, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called the children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together and they will appoint one leader that will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. And here's what um, Anna shares with us today. And so let's, let's think through these words. Human relationships can be confusing as we try to figure out what another person wants from us. Our relationship with God can sometimes be the same. We do what we think is right, but we're not sure we can trust his faithfulness, his love. We're not sure what he wants. The Old Testament book of Hosea tells us an unusual story about God and his relationship with his people. It is a gripping account of unfaithfulness and loyalty, of rebellion and relational pain. a wandering, and a wooing. God tells the prophet Hosea to take a prostitute for a wife and have children with her. The children's names represent God's pity, punishment, and pain. They refer to the way that God's people have persistently done their own thing and how God has constantly chased after them and defended them. In the face of their unfaithfulness, his love is endless, but it doesn't come without personal cost. 
the third child's name sums up the emotion of the fraught relationship. You are not my people. I am not your God. Verse 9. Perhaps there have been times in your life when you felt and maybe still feel that God expected too much and demanded too much. Maybe you felt the cost of following him was too much and either ignored or went against God. And now you wonder whether or not he can forgive you. Imagine the pain of hearing from him. You are not my child and I am not your God. Is it true? Has he broken off the relationship forever? Like the people of Israel, represented by Hosea's unfaithful wife, Gomer, we too reject God's call on our lives and turn to our own thing. The people of Israel were worshiping false gods, neglecting justice, denying what God had done for them. He wasn't simply embarrassed by his children, like a mom with a screaming child having a tantrum in a cafe. He was pointing out that they had denied their very DNA. They were created in his image for relationship with him as individuals and a community. No matter how many times he went after them and brought them back, they still wandered off. You are not my people and I am not your God. It is painful to read, to think, to feel. It can't get much worse than being rejected by your creator. However, the final verses of the chapter reveal that this is not the end of the story, but the beginning. The prophet tells us that the declaration, you are not my people, will be transformed into children of the living God, verse 10. The break in relationship is the result of Israel's disobedience. They will be exiled from the promised land, but they will be brought back. They will be healed. God will call them his children again. We too have turned away from God. Perhaps you have gone your own way many times, but God hasn't let you go. What do you want from me anyway? You might shout at him like a petulant child, a broken-hearted lover, a confused soul. Unexpectedly, just when things seem at their worst, God speaks and says, my child. Anna asks us to also take some time and consider the account of the prodigal son, one we just looked at this past Sunday at our church, and how uh, the love of the father reaches out to the son and, and brings him back in, into the fold. In what ways do you struggle to stay faithful in your relationship with God? What does it mean to, to you that God calls you his child, no matter how often you've rebelled? good things to ponder. Let's take a moment in prayer as we close off. Lord, I don't always know what you want from me, but I believe you do not want to let me go. Thank you for your persistent and faithful love. Help me to grasp what it means to be your love child. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And uh, we will see you tomorrow online or in person. We are limited down to 50 people for the service just because of COVID restrictions. But we are always online that you can watch here on this YouTube channel. And hopefully we'll also get it up and running on Facebook Live from our Ormonka Baptist uh, Facebook pages. God bless and uh, happy Sabbath.